What's about the church? We hear about a model like house churches mm. and the big churches. Mm. What do you think about that? Have we to um, thinking about that, that we have to close the big churches and only to live in, in house churches? Or what do you think about that? Okay, let's, let's say, um, how to explain that? Um, if we look at Paul, Paul, he went to the synagogue and he preached the gospel. Some places they received him. Some places they tore him out, but a few people received him. Mm -hmm. Some places all rejected him. Yeah. He went <clears throat> always to the synagogue to preach there, start with what we already had. But when Paul then came to other places in the future and other disciples came to other places where there was no synagogue, they did not start with building a synagogue. Mm. So I would say, let's work with what we have. Mm. I was in the Church of England, a church that is, I don't know, the church building is maybe 500 years old or 400 years old. And there was a vicar there and he invited me and we did a kickstart and we did a baptist, but he went on the other side to borrow the baptist church because they have a farm to yeah. baptize and yeah. he baptized people there. I felt a freedom in that church building because that vicar, he was truly not, he was there. But even so, he was in that church building, he was in that setting, he had, he, his heart is, my discipleship, his heart is doing exactly what we are doing. Yeah. If he should start from the bottom up and start with nothing, he will not have a focus to end up with that big church tower that is 500 years old and that system, because this is not, his heart is not what he will end up with, but this is what he had to work with now. Um, and I, I, so, so I would say that our goal, those people, I, I, I work with what I believe, our goal is strong disciples. Our goal is disciples who are living out there in everyday life. It can look very different. Yeah. I believe that we believe that in the future, when persecution is really setting in, we cannot continue with our church building, our big meetings, because we cannot do that in countries with persecution. So we have a goal, and that is disciples going out, preaching the gospel, for healing the sick, and being dependent on the Holy Spirit, and see a movement growing all over. But when that is said, let's start with what we already have. You have a church, I do not have a church. I start from outside without nothing and building the way I do to make disciples. But right now you have a platform that's already given. You have a church building that's already there, it's paid for, you can work with this. I don't say leave all of that and then go and start with nothing. I would say it's like Paul in the synagogue, start with what you have. Please make disciples as long as you can do it then it's not a problem, then it's good. And then there can come amazing fruit out of that. But if you then feel that thing, that you suddenly feel a wall that you cannot, because it can be other leadership, it can be finance, it can be other things that creep in, then there is a problem. Yeah. But as long as there's no problem, there's no problem. Yeah. And I personally have been in churches like the Church of England and a church I was in Holland, big churches. I have in some of those churches experienced more freedom than in house churches. Yeah. Where I've been in small house churches, but it's like, oh, so much control, so much do 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 do, and so much fear of making disciples and letting people go because. Yeah. We want to keep on to all the members we have. We have 20 members and that is ours. We keep on to that. And there has been more control mm. in small churches than big churches. So what do I preach out for? I, I am right now working outside that church thing, mm. starting with people who are not in there and making disciples there. But I'm still working with people who are inside that church and working out of that and making this out there. We have the same goal, we have the same focus. Your platform is just different than my platform. Yeah. And, and, and I love it. So, 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 and, and I believe that, that, that we can, like Paul was yeah. in the synagogue, 
Vi booker faktisk en beginning der med den homes, hvor den der mænd med også daily at the temple. Ja. The temple area was like a marketplace. Yeah. It was a place where people came to get up. Did they do that? Yes, but because it was what they had to work with. Did that mean that every city they came to, they built a new temple so they could meet there? No. Yeah. Then they met with other places with what they had to work with. So also with this understanding, be a Jew for the Jew, be yes, a Greek yes, for the Greek and like this. I'm actually, I know it's a fearful sport, but we actually start in church in our city now. In that way, we go out and, and call it more church. We know us. We know we have always been church. We are church. Yeah. We don't need a name to be a church. We are part of the body. But to be a Jew for the Jew, to be a church for the church goers, to, to reach those people who are not free yet, we try to speak a language they understand. Yeah. We start a coffee shop. Also at the same time, why? Because there is people who want to go to church, yeah. we can reach them. Church, there's people who don't want that, who want to meet at a coffee shop, we want to meet coffee shop. I would say it's really what you get out of it. So we will have the, the next time the, the big news, Torben Sondergaard, new church leader about the last Reformation church the, in Alborg. Uh, but, but the chance is that, <laughs> again, what language do we speak yeah. and, and, and uh, how do we communicate? Because we all here know we are free. We know what it is. So, so, so when that is said, for me, it took me many years to come out of that church mentality. Yeah. And it was a long journey. Uh, And I think that is the most important to be free. Do I say that it cannot happen in a church building? No, I'm not saying that. I say it's, it, it can happen all over the place. Mm. Because we actually have a building now yeah. where we train people. We actually come together. Yeah. We actually sometimes have pews because sometimes we are so many people we cannot sit around the table. So we out with the tables and in with the pews. <laughs> We have some of the strongest media in the pew. When I do Kickstarter meetings, everybody sit on pew because there's not room for people if people sit around tables. And when we do meetings, I'm the one who are preaching. The order is not preaching. It's not everybody come together, everybody has to share. So I would say there's room for different things. There is room sometimes for the big meetings. There is room for the discipleship. There is room for, there can be room for me buildings. Like Paul in the end of Book of Acts, he rented a place for two years. <laughs> Paul, he rented a building. Yes, he did. Is that a, a sin? No. It's all the focus in it. But when that is set all together and when everything comes together, it is difficult for yeah. many people to follow the whole truth and see that when you are in it. For most yeah. people, you have to come out and experience that journey to see what church is really about. And I would say that is the people I speak to and that is my language. Yeah. And now you are trying inside and work yeah. with that. And, and if I believe it was totally impossible and I was against, 100% against that, I would not sit with you here. Yeah. I would not go to the same church and sit in the same church <laughs> again. Again, I would not sit down with pastor and have pastor meeting. Then I would just reject them and say, come on, this is wrong. And we don't do that. Why? Because we can use what we have to bear fruit. Are there some statements in your books or perhaps also in the movie that you're going to thinking about that, that you will, that would change them if it will be possible? I would say it's, it's so difficult again with books and, and, and teaching because I don't know who's the receiver. Yeah. Um, this book, Last Reformation, have, have, uh, some pastors hate it, really hate it. Some pastors love it. Why? Mm. Because it's really some people feel I speak against them and some people see the heart and don't know. I'm actually just speaking this truth. Yeah. I'm actually setting them free because the Holy Spirit revealed the same thing with them. Uh, but this book is not written to pastor leaders of it's, it's written to the people. 
and there's more people that there's pastors and leaders. There's only a few pastors and leaders and there's more and more people out there. So it is a book where it's very honest and I say things in a provoking way, but it really said words on what many people are already experience in the heart. When that is said, I wrote this book out of my worldview and my experience with the traditional church. And it was limited at that time to, to what I saw in Denmark. <laughs> I've got more positive surprises the last years. And if you told me before about that, what you... Yeah, I've seen pastors, I've yeah. seen networks, yeah. I've seen big networks yeah. who are exactly on the same page. And okay. that had really... Jack, there I have a question, yeah. please. Um, you said it, you have wrote this book to the people. Mm. But those people, mm. they come into the church to the pastors and say to them, you are wrong, you are wrong, you have to change everything. Mm. We are but but I would say, but it, I actually say many things in the book. I talk in many ways against the big church. Yeah. But there is a line in that book where I said, but people don't read that. Well, there's a line where I said, but I've seen the same in the house churches. So if I should choose between a small church or a big church, I would take a big church. I say that. I say that in the middle of the book, but people often don't read yeah. that line. People read, hey, look what he's saying there. And I say, but no, you have to read it all and understand the heart and where I come from and, and who I'm speaking to. Um, but there is things when that is said that, for example, the Danish uh, and the English book, there's things that have been changed because when I wrote that book uh, and it got translated to Swedish, yeah. There was people who translated to Swedish and they came with five, six places in the book and said, Tom, yeah. is that necessary to say like that? Because some of the statements was a little provoking. Yeah. I am provoking. I, but, and I think maybe I'm too provoking sometimes and people can come and say, Tom, you need more wisdom. You are too provoking. If you are more soft, then you can reach more people. And sometimes I could listen to that and sometimes there is a truth in that. And sometimes I just need to say in another provoking way, not yeah. in a proud way, but a humble way, but still provoking way. But okay, you yeah. want to give me wisdom, but the truth is I'm here, I'm seeing through you or not. Yeah. Because, because so, so I think we can be too wise in a hu humanistic way where we please people in a humanistic way where we change nothing. Yeah. And I'm not a change nothing guy. I'm a come on, let's change her. <laughs> and in that I have said statement there is too much and I agree in that. Something I've changed. For example in the Danish book I say one time, are you a pastor? Then it's better to stop your job and go out and get a real job and start to make disciples <laughs> something like that. Uh, okay. Again, I was talking to those people there at that time. I know that statement will really hurt if you are not there, but there and living your life down as a pastor and trying with everything you can to help people. That thing we removed from this book. And, and there was other statements we tried. And, and when we sat down and translated, we, we talked about how to, how, how to do it because we want to not take the it's out of it because still we need to wake up it's yeah. a wake up call the last one is a wake up call but we don't want to be unwise in it um, and now the book is translated to many languages where I have no possibility to read yeah. what they're actually saying and we have many bad translations and many statements taken out of context uh, because who is said to and in one context yeah. and so on. So, so that's also why I think it's good with a video like this to, to get to know our heart and so on. Yeah. Uh, but, but we are on a journey and of course there are things, if I knew who was listening, I would say it different. If I know what I know now, I would say different. There's things in online pioneer school. I will not say like that. It's now one and a half years, two no, or two, three years or two years, three years since I started doing it. Have I learned something since? Yes. Have I got more wise? Hopefully, 
I'm going to, I am and I'll continue. Um, have I got more soft in some areas? Have I got better net out of me? I would say when I did the last one, I said, God, I actually needed to wait three years for God to allow me to write it because I was bitter. I was hurt in the beginning. Was I bit unhurt when I wrote it? I'm not sure. I would say, I don't think so. No. But I think I felt alone <laughs> in my statesman because I was alone and I was fighting with fear. Yeah. I needed to say really shit harder. Yeah. Uh, for example, people sometimes ask, Tom, why do you shout when you cast demons out? Are the demons do- uh, dumb? Can they not hear you? <laughs> no, they can hear me, but I shout because I don't want to hear my fear. Yeah. And for me, shouting, it, it, I, I become bolder. Uh, so it's to help me, not to help the demons. Yeah. Um, and why do I shout and say things so radical? Because I need to help that fear I've been fighting with. Now we see the fruit of what I started with and, yeah. and we see the fruit of what we are doing and, 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 and I don't need to I don't need to prove anything because the fruit is already speaking. And that has helped me actually <laughs> to just calm down a little. Yeah. And, 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 and I don't need to fight so much for it. Yeah. And, and, and therefore, what I come out with would sound a little more soft. Yeah. 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 So, another question. Yeah. Why you are against theology? And by yourself, you put more than 20 lessons of teaching on yeah. the internet. Yeah. Uh, first, I'm against theology. Uh, again, the, the define theology. Uh, if theology is studying the word, is if theology is the sound doctrine, no, I'm not against. I have a book called Sound Doctrine. Am I against teaching? No, at all, all not. Of course, we teaching is amazing. This is the word and 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 and, and Jesus, and, and we need the life. We need Jesus, the Spirit of Christ, and we need the written word. Uh, when I talk about theology um, and studying theology, I think there is a different problem with it. I think for me, if, if again, what is the goal in life? If the goal is if, if becoming a priest <laughs> in a church and speak, is theology good for that person? Yeah, because that church way of doing church we do now demands theology yeah. demand that people go in and study theology so they can teach but i see a problem again in that because this is not what christ had called us to this is not what the church was in the early church there were unlearned men simple unlearned men without education jesus did not build up bible schools theology schools universities and we did not see that many hundred years. And if we are honest and just look at this, is it now that what is the fruit today of theology, studying theology universities? Is the fruit unity? No, because the Baptist Church have their own theology, the Lutheran Church, the Pentecostal Church, and then there's other churches, yes. Methodist Church, who have all theology classes and what happened that those people who study theology with l- really learned educated men who can read and Hebrew they come out of that yes. not agreeing with that person not agreeing with that person not agreeing with that person because everybody come out with the same classes why because you 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 when you study theology you get a certain classes on and you become like those people you have been studying with. That is good if you are so lucky that you study the right place. But is there anybody who have the whole truth? I'm not sure of that. I believe that the whole truth is all over the place. And, and they have some of the truth, they have some of the truth, they have some of the truth, they have some of the truth. How do we come into this whole truth? By just studying the word ourselves. Uh, when talk about, uh, let's say like that, when talk about... Um, if you are Baptist minister, mm-hmm. studying theology, you start to do your ministry inside the Baptist church. Yeah. There's a challenge in that because if you then come to a revelation that you needed the Holy Spirit, yes. then it's not just to change theology and come to that point. It's to mm-hmm. say, 
no to your job, say no to your friends, say no to your network. And very often those places we started, it limit us. It limit us to really see the full picture. Mm-hmm. Uh, and for me, there's a freedom in now just studying the world. If I see something, I change something. I've changed many things when it comes to theology. Yeah. Because I'm free to just study myself. I'm free to listen to everyone. Yeah. But I'm also free to come to a point where what do I actually believe? People then think that is dangerous. But the Bible was for common man. The Bible was not from scholars. Nobody was scholars in the early church. Everything was a simple language for uneducated man yeah. where the Holy Spirit was teaching. And the fruit of universities is, and I've heard this quoting from somebody who had been studying on Fuller University for seven years or six years, how many it was. He said, the more you study theology, the less useful you are in the kingdom of God in to lead people to Christ. Yeah. Because what do you often learn on universities? You don't learn of the personal relationship with Christ, of hearing the voice of God, of healing the sick, of cast out yeah. demons, of, of walking by the Holy Spirit, yeah. of leading people to Christ, of doing this stuff. You do not actually just go through the whole Bible and just read the Bible and seek the Word, but you learn about the Bible, you yeah. learn about the theology of the Bible, you read big books that should explain one verse from the Bible. And suddenly we come in and we become so smart and to be understand scripture, you need to... Uh, I've heard people like, what about Romans? There is a verse, chapter Romans 3.20, how do you read that? And there, the answer is say, hey, read those books. And suddenly you need to read five big books to understand one verse. It was not supposed to be like that. Uh, and I've seen bad fruit coming out of systematic theology and coming out of universities. Mm -hmm. I have seen many people who was on fire, who loved Jesus, and then the study and the fruit, they become pop up proud, but there's no life. They don't hear from God anymore, and there's no life. And that is the facts, and we can look at the facts, and that is the facts, and we can disagree with what I'm saying, but that is the truth, that is the facts. Is the good fruit of a people studying, but you can find good fruit of everything. There is people who have studying and there is good fruit. But when I speak again, I do not speak of those 5% where there's good fruit. I'm focused on the 95% where there's bad fruit. And I see, a, a, and that is what I'm appreciating when I talk against that. And also when I talk against being priest or focus so much that we are all priests. I don't mean that when I then meet you who yeah. are a priest, I need to shoot you down and say you are enemy to me because you <laughs> are a priest and you work in a church and you have been studying. No, no, I'm, this is not what I'm saying, but I'm trying to get people to understand that we through studying theology and and, and focus on your university have at the same time preaching that those who have not studied, they cannot do ministry. We, by putting hand on people and ordaining people to ministry, are at the same time teaching that those people who are not ordained can do ministry. We who use the name priest the way we do and say, now you are priest. Very often we are at the same time preaching that you are not priest, therefore you cannot do it. And I think this is the problem with the, we, the body of Christ become one member, yeah. the priest, the ministry, the teacher, instead of a body of believers where everybody can can do things. Uh, and this is what I try to go against. That have there come good fruit out of university? Yes. Am I against study? No. Am I against theology? No. Why do I then preach the way I do it? Because the facts, because most people out there don't need it. Yeah. Most people need something else. Me myself, do I listen to scholars who have studied theology? Am I against that? No. Mm-hmm. Do I work with people who are study? Yes. Do I believe in study? I study a lot. I believe in theology. I believe in what I'm sitting with my computer and strong concordance and going into Greek and learning. But yeah, this is, this is a point what I heard too. Mm. They would say, why a guy like you teach so many things that 
You were your own. You never study. Mm. And I say, a guy like me, I don't say that everything I'm teaching is have been teaching have been career because I've changed a lot. For example, I have need to burn the first two books I wrote because it's not worthy to read, and I have changed things where I've learned things. Uh, I've become sharper also in the pioneer school with special Baptist, I've been sharper and seen things I did not see in the beginning mm. of my journey. Um, so I've been teach. Uh, so so I have been growing myself. Um, I believe when people see my teaching and other teaching, we should not look at the teaching and judge the teaching out of what that person have of theology, of degrees. Yeah. Because if we did judge a teacher out of his university degrees, yeah. we should not read the Bible at all. Because Paul Peter, well, Paul had, of course, but he said everything I've learned is wasted for the things to learn Christ. But Peter was a simple man and, and we read the letter of Peter. We listen to Peter, we listen to Jew, we listen to those people who was uneducated, unlearned man. Why did we listen to them? Because they have been together with Jesus and because of the truth. I think if people should listen to my teaching, not judge me out of what I've been studying theology, but judge me out of what I'm saying and out of the word. Um, and and personally, I think it's, it's sound doctrine. <laughs> I'm coming with most of it. And I'm trying, really trying to study, study, learning, study and learning. And, and I'm learning, I am making mistakes. Uh, but, but, uh, but, but I've heard many testimonies where people have critical going to teach in the pioneer school and I say, that is, I, because they're really skeptical about me as a person. But when they study, they're like, but it's biblical. And I was not only a healing guy, yeah. I was not only a, a, a doing that guy, I actually had strong things where they saw death in it. Yeah. And, and, and I don't build just like, I don't build doctrine out of Book of Acts. One verse, I quote Acts 238 a lot, but I don't build doctrine out of that verse. I don't build doctrine out of Mark 16. 17, uh, these I follow those yeah. who believe my name, there's the hands on the sick and cast out demons, so on. Don't be doctrine out of those two verses. I, that is part of doctrine, that is part of the big picture. Uh, and this is, yeah. yeah. But now you are the guy with all the whole knowledge. Yeah, yeah I have everything. Yeah, when we read the sound doctrine, mm. when you start with the entrance and all the yeah. stuff, yeah. it's so strong. That was God who has told yeah. you all these yeah. things yeah. to write it down. Yeah. Uh, I would say I, I make, but I, I don't preach that I have the whole truth. Uh, there's so many things that is still lagging also in the last Reformation. Uh, new things is happening right now. We have people coming with other ministries who are more shepherd type, who have other things, gifting I don't have, we don't have here. Uh, we, are, we are just a part of it. We, we, so, so we are learning all the time. Um, when talk about the pioneer school, there's a guy like David Pawson I've said before in England, uh, who's a teacher and he's one guy, there's other guys I've contact with. I have often been contact and say, hey, what do you say about this and this mm. was? And there have been there's things I don't agree with them in. There's other things I agree with them in. And there's things where I did not agree with them in. I thought they were wrong, but I was wrong and I see that now and I need to change the theology. And I have changed many times with things uh, and I think it's healthy to keep changing and help to keep learning. The Sound Doctrine is a book old book, written old book, and, 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 and it was written in a place where God confirmed it and did it, and, and I really felt he spoke to me, he really spoke to me and said, this is how you get it out. Um, so when you just read the words, of course, you can think like, oh, Tom, he says God, and do, 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 but at the same time in the book, I'm actually also saying there that that see God and listen to the Holy Spirit because I think what is in my book, The Sound Doctrine, there is only something that is 100% truth and that is every time I, I quote scripture. Yeah. 
And the same thing in my teaching, there is only something that is 100% truth, that is when I quote scripture. Uh, my words, our wordings will never be 100% truth. And I hope people will have that in their heart and listen to the Holy Spirit in it. Uh, but also the Bible itself, you can quote scripture, but you can misunderstand scripture because there is uh, who is the sender, yeah. who is the receiver, yeah. when it's written yeah. in one context, it's, it's written. So, so, but I will never say in any place that my teaching, that my books is on any level when it comes to the Bible. So I will not say that you should take my words as the written word of God. Yeah. Uh, and, and I think people will know that mm -hmm. when they listen to my teaching. Yeah. Um, so yes, maybe it, it, it can come as a little bold statement, but it's who I am and it's not easy to sometimes change who you are. Yeah. And I speak with boldness and, uh, and I would always do that. Yeah. Do you know about the thinking outside of TLR? There are so many pastors and churches, they are not agree with that, what you, they hear about mm. you mm. and TLR. Mm. You know about that? Mm. And what you are thinking about that? Uh, when, when, when God started with this journey and, and I started to, to uh, I would say, see the truth when it comes <laughs> to church and, and what we are doing there, um, I would say I experienced a lot of attacks, of course, of fear, because I was like, I know person, I'm not against the church, I'm not, for, I, I'm for the church, I'm for the body of Christ. But but I know like, take my Luda with the Reformation, they said that he was, Satan himself came to destroy the church. And and, and this is something we, he, uh, we know today that, that he didn't want to destroy the church, he actually wanted to reform the church back to the truth. And I needed to, everyone needed to deal with themselves and say, okay, will I, I'm, am I ready to do this? Am I ready to be misunderstood? And I'm ready to change things. And there is many who hate me, uh, some people who don't like me, let's say like that, hate a strong word, uh, because they actually, because I'm speaking the truth and because I'm actually speaking against them. Yeah. This is the truth, because they are controlling people, they are manipulating people, they are using people to build up their own platform, and, and that church, that thing they're doing is not the sound doctrine, it's not the word of God, and they're leading people astray. And, and they will, should be offended. Mm -hmm. But if Jesus had come today, would he come there? How would Jesus be if he was in that church? We need to ask that question also. There is also other people who, who are afraid, because they don't know where this is going. They don't know, they have maybe only seen a, a top of the pyramid, a, a, a little of the teaching, iceberg, I want you to say on top of the iceberg. And, and they have had bad experience where, where people have taken our teaching, but they not had the heart to do it. Yeah. For example, and, and I would say, let's come and say, I can, I can be out on the street and I can tell somebody in a way, explain somebody that they go to hell. Yeah. And that person gave me a hug afterward and said, thank you. Other people can be less radical, yeah. but people feel they want to hate them and feel just why? Because the attitude is wrong, the heart is wrong, the body language is wrong, and, and everything they do is actually give just a wrong taste. And, and we have seen that a lot, where people have taken the truth, there is a truth, but they have taken that truth to the church in the wrong heart, in the wrong attitude. So have we made mistakes? Absolutely. Have we learned? Absolutely. And one of the things we have focused a lot on now in the pioneer training schools is character. So you, there uh, was, yeah. we have the pioneer school, yeah, that are pioneer. the lessons yeah. on the internet. Yeah, that is and online. Then, yeah, and then we yeah. have the pioneer training school, yeah. where we see there are now some yeah. different locations. I would, I would say the pioneer training school, the 20 lessons online, that's 25. I encourage people to not just see one of the lessons, and not, especially not just see 
a few quotes in one of the lessons. Yeah. Because there is quotes there. I am provoking. I say from the beginning I'm here to provoke. Yeah. But I'm, I'm provoking with a smile. And I'm trying <laughs> yeah, to, to provoke to just get people to think. But if you see it all and follow it all, hopefully people would see my heart in it and, and get the big picture and try to divide between church and church. What, okay. what church, what, what church and what disciples and the Christian, what, what it's all about. Um, when that is said, there is then people who, who take that quote, so people come to the pioneer school, especially in the beginning, who run out from here, and go to the pastor, say, you're wrong, we have to do like this and this and this. And there have been many times where I'm like, oh no, why well, I'm thinking, okay, there's so many people I see many bad fruits out of. Yeah. And, and, and I'm very often when, when people in our neighborhood we work with, I'm like, bad fruit and good fruit. I see a lot of good fruit, but I don't see bad fruit. And I'm like, okay, how do I control it? I can control it. And then I can just, and then let nobody speak. And then cut it down and say, you don't baptize, you don't do this, you don't do this, because I have to be perfect. But this is not who I am. I know by setting people free to do ministry, there is people who will make mistakes. Mm. And I know that mistakes will come back to moi, come back to me, and I will be the problem in it. And when I started this, I really felt God said to me, are you ready to take that blame, that that split, that problem, that it will come back to yeah. your shoulder? And I would say, yes, I need to do it because... Yeah. If I don't do it, I will not see good fruits at the mm -hmm. same time. Mm -hmm. And 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 nowadays, bad fruits and good fruits, and I believe it will always be like that. And and that is different from place to place. So I want to say sorry for for some people mm -hmm. who have experienced a bad attitude and a bad thing there. But other places, I cannot say sorry, right? Because we need to see that transformation. And those parts, instead of getting offended by those people who come and say something. They should actually listen to it. Because maybe there was a, a messenger from God who actually came to say the truth to them. Yeah. So again, it's, it's so difficult because I'm not in that situation. I'm not there. I don't know who said what and what this one and that one. And, and with the last information, we we try to to put a high standard now with character and love. We talk a lot about love yeah. here. Uh, and about, uh, for some, some from here yeah. went to a church in this city a few days ago, another church. And the pastor was really like skeptical when they came in. But the Holy Spirit spoke to them, just love them, just be with them, don't do anything, just be with them. And he just softened his heart because he had a lot of things. Oh, now they come from TLR to take over and to preach and say that and that. But then he met people who just came in love and mm -hmm. just was there and yeah. with them. And I love that. I love that story. I, I, we want to see more of that. So from the beginning of the PTS school, <laughs> schools to now, we have started to focus even more of character, yeah. even more of love and the heart in it. So we have less of those bad testimonies. Can we end the bad testimony completely? No, we cannot. Because we are saying everybody can do ministry, everybody can preach, everybody can do that. And together with that, that would be a mess. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know if that answers the question. Yeah. So, so, so I'm saying, again, it's like... Uh, when, 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 why people are also against it? I would say that when, when I started... I was, I do past a leader meeting, and this is something new also. Yeah. I've not started with that. When I'm out in, in doing big uh, kickstart events, uh, I put in program past a leader meeting. And that is something new that I've started the last half year, because I saw there was a need for that. Why do we do a video here? Because there is a need for it. Uh, and, and that is to, to show our heart, to explain who we are and, and, and what it's all about. Yeah. And I see good fruit coming out of the past leader meeting. And that is, I actually don't go out on the streets often when I do Kickstarter weekends. Because I am more effective in sitting, eating dinner with 15 pastors than be out on the street. Uh, and, and, and there is coming really good fruit out of it because people can ask their question and, 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 and experience our heart in it. And when I start, in past leader meeting, I start telling my story that I was evangelist, I worked there, and then I became a pastor myself. 
uh, to just put me in the same box as them yeah. to explain that well, I'm not standing outside here and pointing a finger. I, I have been there. I know it. I came from that. I experienced that journey myself. Uh, but when I said when 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 it comes to the mess and so on. I hope in the beginning, or thought that I could just sit down with people, explain everybody, say yes, amen, I agree with you. But it's really a revelation. It's really something the Holy Spirit needs to do in people's heart yeah. to really get that understanding. And I would say for me, it took me 40 years, three church planning, for me to take that church system mindset out of me. I got the first three months. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so we have been a long journey, and and and, um, and and I would say that I don't take it so personally that people are against me that way because I will also have been against me no. <laughs> some years ago, and and I have been the one standing in and pointing fingers, yeah. and and I meet pastor, and I would say I agree with you, I follow you, I and I really understand where you are come from, but please t- try to see the fruit. Try yeah. to see what is happening. Not with those people who are making crazy things, but try to see with those people you are really working with. It's not many ads who's just going out on the street and, and preaching against the churches. It's, it's people who, who love yeah. Jesus, love each other, and making disciples. Yeah. And, and that is the good fruit of it. Yeah. Yeah. How you would say the pastors or you can encourage them how they can handle this when people watch the lessons mm. or come back from a PTS mm. when 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 we start talk about TLR as, as the movement and the fire and, and all that that is 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 a is is a new thing in that way that I've been doing ministry for 18 years, 16 years full time and traveling and as an evangelist and church planner and so on. But but this after my disappearance, this have, is is we talk about four years, maybe mm-hmm. five years uh, like this. So everything we sit with now have been grown a lot, and in that growth, new things have developed and new things is developed. We are doing now our leadership training school or mm-hmm. pioneer leadership school mm-hmm. instead of our pioneer training school. So, so because we see there's need for more training yeah. and there's need for more things. And I'm learning, we are listening. I was just in Brazil. There was a big network who had done like us for years and had more experience. And then I said like a small child, <laughs> speak to me. What did you do wrong? What, what I wanted to learn and I recorded the conversation and asked questions like a little boy. Okay, uh, what, what happened 30 years ago? Where, where did it go good? Where did it go wrong? Because I want to learn, I want to learn, I want to learn. There is areas I don't have the full answer because I have not tried yet. And that is for some where you come in also, where, where he come in because he's a pastor, he works with a church. And he's you are using the Pioneer Training School and showing that for the people in your church. And we are starting together with you, our, our Pioneer Train, like using the online school, showing that and you have Kickstart weekends. And, and you are now, we are now doing a pioneer training school together with you. This is new for me. This first time I'm sitting with a pastor where we, in his church, out of that church, it's not the church who do it, but we still use the building and we still work with the people there, do a PTS, a pioneer training school. What is the fruit of that? I don't know. I've not tried it before and I don't think you know it. Um, so I would not, I would not be able to give the full answer and say, this is how we yeah. you do it. I would say that I hopefully, out of what you are doing now and now for we are doing and out of my experience with other church leader and pastors, we will later be able to be more concrete in saying this is what is working, this is not what is working. Yeah. We can give advice. I can say things now. But there's areas where I'm, I'm still not sure. Yeah. Um, so what is my advice right now? It really depends on who you are. Mm. I would say my advice is, I think the Pioneer Training School, the online Pioneer Training School is amazing teaching. I, I believe my advice is to, to set people free, to let them grow, to develop themselves yeah. by doing and, and be creative in that. 
uh, to come out of that Sunday mentality. You can still meet on Sunday, but the focus is not that meaning. The focus there is to equip to live everyday life. Because the fruit, the joy, the peace, the life is coming when people are doing right. and not just listening. So we need to reform that church. We can use a church building. We can use a church meeting to train and do it. What I said in Brazil, my advice there was they start a movement, exactly like us in many ways, 30 years ago, it exploded all over in Argentina and then Brazil all over South America. But it slowly died together with meetings and programs and other things. <laughs> and it died that they start, they ended talking theology and talking about doing, but they stopped doing. Yeah. And, and then when we stop doing, this is where the first, the love is dying. And, and we, one of the past, I got a revelation of, of uh, Revelation 2, the uh, letter to Ephesus, I think it was, where he said, I have that against you that you have left your first love. There is nothing called first love in the Bible, there's just love. So I have that against you that you have left the love you had in the beginning, you had first, the love you had. Uh, what is the solution when we leave the love? Repent. And do the deeds you first do. Yeah. Because when we do the deeds, we are loving. We feel the love. We feel God is alive. But when we stop doing, the love is dying. And they stopped at one time doing because they got focused in so many other things. And what I encourage them to is what we did with them that weekend. I would say, do that. The simple gospel, repentance, baptism, water, Holy Spirit. Equip people to share the gospel, heal the sick, cast out demons, lead people to Christ, do all of that every time we come together. Yeah. Do nothing else than that the next two, three, four months. Yeah. The same thing all over again, into that point that everyone know the gospel, can preach the gospel, everyone are, su- are born again, have repented, have got baptized water, everyone have received the Holy Spirit, everyone have it. Don't focus on any, any other things. I say to them, do that as the only thing. Because when everybody have that, and that is a part of everybody's life, and now it's exploding all over the life. I heard one person the last two weeks have baptized 70, one city have baptized 80. I know of healings, the past and right is out of control now, and they love out of control because everybody's going around, and we see a big, big move in Brazil, and you're going to hear about it very soon. Uh, but I say, do that simple stuff again, again, again the next half year. Yeah. And, but, but, but what about this, this, and this, and this? But because when that is laid, that foundation laid, everybody do like that. Then you can start to preach other things yeah. and do other things. Because now when new believers come in, you don't need to go through. Talk about repentance, talk about baptism, talk about the Holy Spirit, talk about how to do this, talk about how to do this. Why? Because they come into a community of believers where everybody is doing it. Yeah. And they are learning by what they see and this is what they get introduced to. So that point comes automatically. Yeah. And when that is there, then we can start to build deeper things. Uh, and that was my advice to them. Yeah. And my advice to many out there. But again, I don't know people. Maybe if I sat down with them, I would give them a different advice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I come to the end, mm. but I have one question. Mm. What are the next steps with TLR in the future? Mm. I would say that um, so we, we did the first movie called The Last Reformation in the Beginning, and that is focused on, on the beginning of kickstarting, repentance, baptism, water, baptism, Holy Spirit. The next is called The Last Reformation in the Life, where we are focused more about how the life looked like, what we talk about. Out on, a little out on the street, but also go to people's houses, homes, and going out with the gospel mm-hmm. and talk a, lo- a little more like about persecution, yeah. about life is hard when it don't go good, when people don't yeah. get healed. So we talk a little more about that, and and then we we felt God wanted to do a third movie, and I think that would be more about the continued church life. Yeah. Um, we have a family here in Aalborg who is have on their heart to start churches all over the place and, and fellowships and that is what we are starting with now all over the house and different places with fellowship and communities to also give students who come here on the PTA school uh, 
not only to show them school life, but to come out in the houses and see how that everyday life looked like. Um, so we, we are doing different things and change things with the website and so on, but, but we will still continue making disciples, doing Kisa weekends, training good people. Uh, but the, the result of that is new fellowship started. And, 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 and work with churches and, and, um, and we are working with that. Um, so how it exactly look, I think uh, I'm, I'm going to do an extra teaching on the Pioneer School later, I think this year, if, when I have time to do it and when God is saying now, and we'll talk a little about church and how it looks like, how do you then follow up on people, how do you work with people. Now you have started with the foundation of the pen passage about the Holy Spirit, you are a kickstart, you've seen people heal, you led a few people to Christ, what now? What is the next step? And 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 I've not been too fast to to give up new teaching because I think uh, the problem for us as people is that it's so easy to say, okay, now there's new teaching, I need to go to that, I need to go. And people forget the first stepping stone, the, the, the simple thing. And I would say it's better to do that and be good at that before you then take the next yeah. step. Yeah. Um, but I believe Jesus is building his church. Uh, I see we are living in an exciting time, 500 years from the Reformation. I believe we're going to see a big, big reformation of the church and it's going to explode. Um, how that completely looks like, I actually don't know. Um, I have ideas. Uh, but what I have fell into now, what I know is that until now the Holy Spirit has really led us. The, Jesus has led us and, and he has shown us things while we have been going and, and new things developed and new yeah. things started. And I believe that new things will continue to start. For example, we start church and fellowships around this city area now and, 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 and we focus even more on, on church planning here. Uh, to use that word, we, we start cafe off yeah. to where people can come and meet and to get involved. Other people who is not so hardcore out on the street, evangelists, but people who who still want to share Jesus, but better with sitting down and doing counseling. So yeah. so things are developed all the time, and um, and I think it's good. I think it's good to be creative. It's good to not be be focused on on. The right and wrong way to reach it because I think it's not about what is right and wrong, it's about the fruit, it's about the people. Yeah. And and I think Paul he went so far that he circumcised his co workers to be effective in the kingdom. Yeah. He said, one place, if you get circumcised, Christ gain you nothing. The next place, he circumcised people to be effective. The book of Acts 16, Timotheus because his father was a Greek, and for him to be circumcised, he would be more effective in reaching the Jews. I think we need to, uh, Paul, he said, I'm, as a Jew, I am, as a Jew, as a Gentile, I am as a Gentile, and so on, so on, for at least a week's people. And I think there is, in that, there is a big freedom in doing different things. Yeah. The focus is the people, the focus is love God, love the truth, love your neighbors, make disciples, and so on. Um, and there's a freedom in that. And I think that we are developed and we are growing. And, and, and I think it's going to look different yeah. from place to place, from country to country, from, uh, from household to household, yeah. because every person are different. And I think there's a beauty in that, that, that it can look different in different places. Yeah. So, but I believe that with the next movie, there's a surprise in the next movie because there's a story in the next movie that's going to shut the whole world, shut the whole world we have not told about yet. And I believe uh, in the next movie uh, is coming out now, 500 years after Martin Luther, because God is doing something. So, so but I, I see it's beautiful, I can see a glimmer of it. God is putting people together also. For us, there's different ministry coming in who are gifted in other areas than we are, who's now coming in and fulfilling the legs that have been in July and last Reformation. Uh, we have talked a lot about how to go on with with the growth in that way that, that there's people who set up TLA groups and there's people who want to set up TLA websites and so on. And, and there's the challenge between not controlling, but also have, keep it pure and keep it what God has said it should be. 
Uh, and that is something we and the people I work with have talked and prayed a lot about. How do we find that balance? Because we don't want to end up as a church organization. We are really aware of that. We don't want to end up like that system. <clears throat> At the same time, we have a responsibility to keep it pure and so on. And we cannot just say everybody just use name and do what they want to do because then the, the power will go out yeah. of it. Uh, so uh, so we are working on it yeah. and I will maybe in a half year or a year give a clear answer and then next year a clear answer again and next year again a more clear answer yeah, uh, yeah. it's not yeah. easy to answer hey that's great thank mm. you very much yeah. for the time yeah. and I said for the same with you we will see what you are doing now yeah. what is happening in Switzerland with the school and, yeah. and how it's happening and I hope out of that we can learn and, and we can also help those people who are free in the mindset, who want the same, who have that focus, but still have some other tools to work with. Yeah. Now you have a building, now you have people, what, how do we go from here? Yeah. And, 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 and so I'm, I'm, we are not, I don't know, we're not controlling you. We are not saying this is how you should do it. Yes, we, right. we are trying to work together and trying to look at it yeah. and learning. And, and I think this is my heart. Do it, learn, change what you need to change, and, <laughs> yeah. and do, be better next time. Be a pioneer. Yeah, be a pioneer. <laughs> yeah. And I think this is, this is uh, I think it's a beautiful way of seeing things that we don't need to be perfect first time we do it. We just need to do it, and then we change and learn by doing it. Yeah. And then it becomes sharper and sharper, and pure and pure, and stronger and stronger. Yeah, yeah. Great. Will you end up or shall I? Thank you very much. Yeah, it was good. I, I hope, yeah, I, I know it's, it became a really long video, but I, I, I <laughs> hope people will, will love this. And, yeah. and, uh, and again, if, if people have more questions or things to say, then come and join. I want to will pass the leaders out there. Try to come and join our Kickstarter weekend when I'm out, because then, then you see what we're doing and you meet the people yeah. and you meet the heart. And there, there is pastor leader gathering. And actually, uh, one of the last pastor leader gathering I had, uh, one of the pastors, he's now joining our next PTS school in three weeks. Because, and, and he said, it was so interesting, I can just end with this. <coughs> we are together a lot of pastors and leaders. And pastor leader normally had pastor leader gathering. And then one asked question about pastors and so on. And I said, uh, guys, um, I don't believe in pastors. And like, what? Here we are with a pastor leader together and Tom, he's saying he don't believe in pastors. And then I explain what I, I believe, like we have built a whole ministry out of a few verses. Uh, there is, uh, but again, it's mentality is how we use the wording and how we explain it because I believe in, in gifting and ministry uh, in that. Um, and then I explain it and I explain my heart and I explain everything. And that pastor, amongst other, he came out to a friend and say, it's crazy. It's crazy. I'm, I'm never, I'm never been at any meeting like this. And, and the guy asked, Cra crazy in what way? Like good or bad? Oh, good, good, really good, uh, really good. And he's now joining us PTS. Yeah. Because people, but the truth is that I'm not against pastors leader. The truth is that if people really get the heart, yeah. there is so much freedom for you in what we are doing. Because most pastors and leaders give the whole life, offer the kids, in many ways, offer the wife, yeah. offer the life for making disciples and running around and serving like nobody else yeah. and are tired, are weared out and 55% of pastors after a few years stop and many get depressed. Yeah. I don't believe it like that. I believe there is a way to serve, to do ministry, to work when it's freedom. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so when I said that, I actually think in, in what you're saying, that I actually think that if you really will listen, I think you who are pastor leader, I think you can experience freedom in yeah. this. I, I, I believe you can find a way where you can serve but you ask about, hey Tom, you are not against me. You are actually trying to save us. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and this is what we want to do. Yes. So nice. We go forward. God bless you out yeah. there. Bye bye.